Happy Friday and welcome to the John DeVito Show. I wanted to get on today and do a podcast about something that I thought might help some of the young men out there or even the older men that are new fathers or fathers. Uh, as you know, many of you know, you've listened to my podcast over the years. I am a father of four children. I've got uh, three boys and one girl. My children are getting older. My son, my oldest son, is 21 years old. I have a daughter that's 18 years old, a son that's 17 years old, and a son that is going to be 15 years old in May. So here I am. You know, I'm a 55-year-old man now, and my my children are growing up. I mean, we've, we've got basically one that's 21 and out working. My daughter's in college, and... You know, my son, who's 17, is going to be in college the year after next. He's a junior in high school right now. So our our children are growing up, and they're moving on, and they're starting to live their lives. And honestly, it's a beautiful thing to watch. It really is. When my kids were young, it was hectic. It was crazy. We were running around with our heads cut off all the time. We weren't getting sleep. <clears throat> it was stressful. There was a lot to being a father and a parent. Now... I can't begin to tell you what an absolute privilege it has been every step of the way to experience being a father and to watch my children grow. Every stage was amazing. Every stage had its own challenges. Every stage was just phenomenal. And I I remember when my kids were little, I used to think about, boy, when they get old, I'm really going to miss them being little. And to a point I do, but honestly, having them at whatever age they are, it's just a new age, a new phase, a new stage in their life, and every single part of it has been a blessing and a privilege. So, you know, if you're a young man out there and you're considering maybe getting married, having a family, having children, and you're afraid, I get it. I was afraid. Um, You know, I grew up in a different time. I grew up with a very strict uh, set of parents. And uh, we'll get into that at some other time. But I I was concerned that I wouldn't be a good father. And I'm sure probably a lot of men feel that way. Now, don't get me wrong as I go into this list. I'm not sitting back telling all of you how wonderful of a father I've been. (laughs) You know, I've been, I think, a pretty good father. But as you get into it, you'll find out that it is impossible to be the perfect father. And I can't speak from a mother's perspective, but the same is true for mothers. You can be a great mother, you can be a great father, but even if you get to that level, you are still making tons of mistakes along the way. So I think that's one of the things that when I was first a dad, I wanted to be this perfect father. I wanted to do everything right. I wanted to raise my children perfectly. And really, there's no way to do it. And I remember one of the best pieces of advice I got from a very wise man that I knew uh, from one of my earliest jobs when I worked in Connecticut. He was an educator in Connecticut and ended up being a chairman for education for the whole state of Connecticut. Very nice man. I really liked him. And he knew me when my wife and I were about to have our first baby. And I still remember this advice to the day. He told me, you have to remember that your children are hardwired with their personalities. And in a lot of ways, they're going to be hardwired with the things that they want to do. And the best thing you can do is guide them along the path. And I remember thinking of that many, many times. Now, when I was younger, I was an athlete. I played sports in high school, I played football in college, on a scholarship, and sports was such a big thing of my life, I always envisioned having children, boys, girls, that wanted to play sports. And I was very fortunate in that way where my children were interested. But my first child uh, really had very little interest in sports when he was young. And I remember that kind of bothering me because I really wanted him to be a baseball player, a football player, whatever. And he did try sports, and it really just wasn't his thing. He eventually discovered theater and, you know, really loved that. It did eventually discover boxing that he did for roughly 10 years. But 
it's very difficult, I think, when you go into parenting, having expectations as to what your children, your children should be, what they should do. Really, it's about figuring out what your children love, what their passion is, what their talent is in, and then helping them along the path, guiding their path, not determining for them what their path is. So that little bit of advice I always found very, very helpful. So I have some other bits of advice that I've come across. And I think that a lot of these will be helpful for the new dad. And if you're a new dad out there and you're listening to me, trust me, you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. But I think if your heart's in the right place and you're really there for your wife, for your husband, whatever it may be, for your children, then you can't go wrong when it comes to being a dad. Being a being present in their lives is literally 90% of the battle. So let's get into some of these things that I have on my list. And I think that this will hopefully benefit you as you go through the process of being a father, even if you're later on in life. You know, I'm still at this point with my children being 21, 18, 17, and almost 15. I'm still owning the craft. I'm still working on improving the person that I am. And I've had to transition a little bit more from being a father that was working with young children to a father now that has adult children. It's a different dynamic altogether. And you have to kind of always fine tune your approach to your children, because if you don't, they're going to start tuning you out. And yeah, that's the last thing in the world you want. You want to be a part of their lives. So the first thing on my list, and this is so very important, cherish your time with your children. One thing that will absolutely amaze you is how quickly the years fly by. When they're little, you never think it's going to happen. You think you have unlimited amounts of time. They're never going to grow up. Then before you know it, they get into school. They're in middle school. They're in high school. High school flies by, and then they're going off to college. It happens literally in the blink of an eye. And from my perspective, I think one of the best things you could do is cherish your time with them, Spend as much time as you can with them and develop that relationship with them when they're young. And if you have that, when they get older, they're going to want to maintain that relationship. So you don't have to spend all your time with them because they have to have their own lives. But time is precious. The amount of time you have with them is truly short. Enjoy it. Squeeze as much as you can out of it. And I think back when my kids were young, I had a an opportunity for a very good job. I had a good job, but I had a, you know, a, an opportunity for a job where I would be one step away from being president and CEO of a company. And I turned it down because I would have had to bet on an airplane every Monday and I wouldn't have re returned home until every Friday. I would have been gone a lot of weekends. And I started to think about it. And the, the one thing I used to think about a lot was someday when I'm older, you know, 65, 70, whatever it may be, and my children are grown, and they're off with their families, and I'm playing shuffleboard or now even pickleball down in Florida, what do I want to remember? Do I want to remember all the business trips I took, or do I want to remember all the memories I made with my children? And it was an easy answer. I wanted to remember the memories. So I passed on that job. It was a hard thing to do, but I have never regretted making the decision of being here for my family. So cherish your time. It goes quickly. And enjoy the time you have with your family because it's fleeting and it goes by quick. When they're young, it's hard. It does get easier. We had at one point four kids under seven, if I remember correctly. I was up to my elbows in diapers. <laughs> we were sleeping. We were trying to figure out who was going to drop the kids off at daycare, who was going to get them to school, who was going to bring them to soccer on the weekends and whatever else. But they do grow up, and as they grow up, they become slowly more independent. Before you know it, the diapers will be gone, and honestly, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I don't have any regrets about not having to change any more diapers. I could literally change a diaper with one thing. So that being said, you know, it's it does get easier. It is very hard for a long period of time, but you'll find as the years go on, you will find that being a parent, a father, a mother will get easier. Don't look at anything as mom duties, share responsibilities. Now, I'm 55 and I grew up in a different generation where 
my father went to work, my mother stayed home, and that's kind of how things were back then. However, I had a mom that had some, had some physical issues in her life, and I had to help with a lot of the chores around the house when I was a kid. So here, when I got married, I had a job where I was working remotely out of the, my, out of the house, and my wife was in a very competitive field in healthcare, and she did not have flexibility in her schedule. So I was a guy that did a lot of the laundry, did a lot of the cleaning around the house, changed diapers, fed babies, because we had to. But honestly, I think it's a good thing if we can get past all the relationship norms that we've had where you're expecting women to do all the, the women things, men to do the man things. It's good if the two of you can be real partners, work together, and not put all of the responsibilities on one person. Because, you know, it's, it's 2023 now. Men are working. Women are working. We need, a lot of times, two working parents to have enough money to afford to have a family. And it's so important to delegate and share the chores with your spouse. And that's something, as a man, you really need to step up and do that to help the women in your life. Love conquers all. You know, this might sound kind of corny, but it really should be at the very center of your operating philosophy as a dad. Ab above anything else, you're going to make mistakes, but your children always need to know that you love them. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to make bad decisions. They're going to get in trouble. They're going to make bad decisions in school. And you can't always be punishing, punishing, punishing without letting them know that you love them. And even now, I talk it out with my children. One of my children recently had some bad grades in school. And I had the conversation with him. We grounded him, and he wasn't happy. But I said to him, point blank, I said, listen, I know this is hard for you to see right now, but I am doing this because I love you. And I want you to have a good life. And I want you to have an education. It's important that you step up and do this work. And I am giving you a path to do so. But you have to realize when you're missing assignments and your grades are not good because you're not trying, then I have to teach you that that's not the way that it works in life. But know that I love you. And that's why I'm doing this. And when you talk it out to them, they may not like the punishment, but I think in general they understand what you're saying and they at least understand that what you're doing is coming from a good place. Okay? Remember that kids like making their own decisions. You may come in as a parent thinking you have to literally make every decision for your child. And I still do that now as my children get older. You know, I tell them, you guys are becoming adults now. You need to start being the CEO of your own life. You need to start driving your own life. I'm not here to tell you what to do. You need to understand what's important to you, what you want to do, and you need to start pursuing those things. However, if you need me, I am here, and I'm always here to give you my advice, to give you my angle, to give you my opinion. You don't have to agree with my opinion, but if you ask me for it and you want my help, I will give it to you, but I'm not going to force it on you. And you know, when, you're li when they're little, I think you have to be a little bit more active in helping them make the right decisions. Because again, you know, you can say to your, to your uh, six-year-old, uh, would you like ice cream every meal for, for a week? And of course, they're going to say yes. That's one of those, those decisions you should probably help them away from and get them to make a more healthy decision on a regular basis. But I think you get where I'm coming from. Give kids the power to make decisions on their own life sometimes. And they're not always going to make the right decisions. And if they ask you for your advice, you can give them guidance and you know help them make those decisions. But I think it's important to start developing that early with your children. Now, this one's going to be important, especially if you're a new dad. A little patience goes a long way. We have three boys and a girl. When our boys were little, they literally would break everything in our house. So if you want to have a museum-style house, you might want to wait until your kids are <laughs> grown up and gone because they run, they play, they break things. They have no regard for how much something costs. And I think it's important for all of us to understand that with your children, they're going to make a ton of mistakes, just like you do as an adult. And you have to have patience. You can't be losing your temper all the time because sometimes it's going to be easy. You might be stressed at work. Your boss is riding you. You have stress with your, your wife or your husband for whatever reason. And then your children are running around crazy at night. They're breaking things. 
it's easy sometimes to lose your temper and yell. I've certainly done it. And I regret the times I've done it. But having that patience is a good thing. And you've got to work on being patient. So your children don't grow up hearing yelling all the time because that's not healthy, right? So work on your patience. Try to be patient and realize that the kids, they're not doing it purposely to ruin your life. But having that patience, I think, will go a long way as you are a father or a mother, for that matter. Got to have a sense of humor. Sense of humor required. And I would also recommend for new dads out there, start working on your dad jokes. Dad jokes are a staple of a good father. You have to have some good dad jokes. I've got plenty. Uh, so if you need me, email me. I can share some with you. But you've got to have a sense of humor. You know, we've had situations where our children wrote in crayons all, all over the wall in our house. And we've had situations. My daughter had uh, a hermit crab in her room. The heat lamp fell off the hermit crab tank and burnt a hole in her carpet and in the wood floor below it. You know, you could get angry. You could yell. It's not going to fix anything. She didn't do it intentionally. It didn't burn the house down. So we, it's still there, and we're not going to replace it until she is officially out of that room. But it's one of those things where we laugh it off. We still kind of make fun of her. She actually has a, a little rug that she put over the burn mark <laughs> in her rug, and we'll, we'll say to her sometimes, hey, let's pull up that little sectional rug and look at what's under that. And she, she's just like, yeah, we won't talk about that. So you got to have a sense of humor as a parent and as a spouse. Read to them often. This is a big one. Reading to your children is a bonding experience. Don't sit downstairs in front of the TV every night while your wife's upstairs doing it. Spend some time reading to your children. I actually, one time, and this was like a great thing, my son's school would have in mystery readers. And I told my son, yeah, you know, I don't have time. I'm not going to, I can't do it, whatever. So he never expected me to be his class's mystery reader. But one day, without him knowing, I came into the class and I was announced to his class and I was the mystery reader. I read two books and I made it really funny. The kids were all laughing. He was so happy that I came in and read to his class. These are the little moments I'm talking about, little moments that you don't want to miss. And really, when it comes down to it, at the end of your life, you may have all the, you know, all the money in the world. You may have the big house. You may have all these things that you think matter when you're younger. When you get older, they don't matter as much. What matters are the memories that you're making, the experiences you're having with your children and with your family. Read to them. If your son wants to play catch with you, play catch. If your daughter wants you to play dolls with her, play dolls. Because before you know it, they aren't going to be asking anymore, and you're going to miss it. So when you have the opportunity, do it and enjoy it because it's wonderful and you're forming a bond with your children. This is one that's, I think, important to a lot of dads, and this is a hard one for dads and moms. Don't be the absent dad or the absent mom. We made a decision a long time ago. My wife and I both have you know, very busy careers. We did not want to be absentee parents. We didn't want to have our children being raised in daycare. We didn't want to have our children raised by nannies. We wanted to be home with our children. We wanted to have a family, and we've done it. Has it always been easy? Heck no. It's been hard. But we try to get there for the sporting events. We try to get there for the different things that are important in their lives. I and mean, we do miss some of them, but we get to as many as they can. When our kids were little, I coached them, and I enjoyed it. It was a lot sometimes coming home from a full day of work, you know, coaching my son's baseball team, my daughter's softball team. It was a lot of work, but I wouldn't trade the memories for the world. So don't be an absentee dad. Be there for your wife. Be there for your children. And the same goes for moms and mothers. Be there for your husband. Be there for your children. All right? Let them play. Let them play. That's the next one. Today, all the parents, and this is us included, are so consumed with getting the kids involved in activities. They have to be in travel baseball, travel soccer. They have to play in club teams. They have to do this. They have to do that. Where literally, I think a lot of our kids have lost the art of going outside and enjoying running around with their friends with unstructured playtime. And that's such an important time where, where children learn about decision-making, problem-solving. They're out having fun like kids should do, running around having a blast. And that's how I grew up. I was a free-range kid. And luckily, our kids got the opportunity 
to run around and play a lot with kids in our neighborhood. Uh, we live in a big neighborhood in a small town, and our kids were able to go out and play with a lot of other kids. And that's so important, I think, for the development, to go out and run around and have some unstructured playtime with friends. So let them play, get out there, have some fun, shut off the TV, shut off the video games, go outside and play. All right, spark their imagination. This is a good one. Kids have a great imagination. Part of that playing outside is sparking your imagination. We used to go outside with my kids, and I would be the monster, and I'd be you know, slow motion chasing them around the yard, and they'd be screaming and running away from me. They'd sit on the swing sets, and I'd tell them stories. And, oh, we had so much fun. I'm sure the neighbors probably thought we were crazy, but we had so much fun when our kids were little. And those are things that I think of now, and it makes me so happy that we're able to do that. So make sure you give them a chance to use their imagination, to be little kids, and don't make them grow up too quickly because they grow up fast enough as it is. Limit TV and video games. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. You can't let them sit in front of YouTube all day long. They all want phones now when they're in elementary school. They've got their phone in their hands all the time. They want Xboxes. you got to have technology-free times where they go out and play and leave that stuff, you know, inside and just go out and have fun because you'll be surprised how much fun they have <clears throat> excuse me when they actually get out and do that all right now this is a bit of a tough one but learn a firm no and i think you also have to establish for your kids that there are consequences for the wrong choices and the wrong behavior if you are constantly indulging your children and you do not ever say to them no then they're going to be entitled and they're going to expect this type of behavior, no matter where they go. So I think sometimes you give your know, children freedom of choice, uh, freedom of play, but sometimes it doesn't always have to be a yes. Sometimes the answer will be a no. And I think when you give them that no, you have to stand by your no and not let them wear you down and make it a yes because they're smart and they're going to learn that all they need to do is badger you to turn that yes or turn that no into a yes. This is important here. Always model good behavior. This is something I didn't always do. Over the last year and a half, I went back to church. And I wish I had modeled church more for them when I was when I when they were little. And you know, you, you've got to make sure that <clears throat> no matter where you are, you're acting the right way. If you yell at people and wear people down and you're mean to people, they're gonna see that and they're gonna tend to do the same thing. So you've got to model good behavior, have a positive attitude, <clears throat> be, you know, be I guess, nice to people. One thing that I never wanted to do is excessively drink in front of my children, do drugs in front of my children, because I think if my kids see me doing that all the time, they're going to feel that's the way families operate. And that's not how my family operated growing up, and I didn't want to be that type of parent. And it's hard because a lot of times people in your town, friends, things like that, they like to have parties, they like to get drunk, and you miss out on a lot of the social opportunities. But for me, I thought it was important to model the right type of behavior in my mind and just not indulging in that behavior as much as, you know, I, I maybe wanted to at some point because it's important, I think, for them to see that. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, another very important one, treat their mother with respect always. Did I always do this well? No, I didn't. But it's such an important thing because the way you treat your wife the way you treat your mother is the way your sons are going to learn to treat the women in their lives. And vice versa for the wife in the way she treats her husband. The daughters are watching. Your sons are watching. And you need to treat each other with respect. You cannot have verbal abuse, most certainly not physical abuse. <clears throat> and it's really not great to have disrespectful behavior amongst either party. So really always try to teach, treat each other with respect. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have fights. If you have one big fight in front of your kids, you haven't destroyed their childhood. But try to work on being respectful of each other all the time because it's important. This is what I mentioned in the beginning. Let children be themselves. It's very important for children to be themselves. It's very important for them to pursue what they want to do. And if you force them in a certain area, eventually they're going to be resentful because they are, they've spent years of their lives doing something they don't love. It's important for all of us to find things that we love to do and chase those things. And it's good to allow our children to find what they love doing 
and let them chase those things. I mean, if I love baseball, it doesn't mean that my son's going to love baseball. You have to let them find what they love and then go after it and then support them in that pursuit as a parent. Teach them independence. This is so important because your kids need to learn <clears throat> that this is not always going to be a life that's easy, that's given to you on a silver platter. And if they're raised that way, believing everything's going to be handed to them, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. You need to teach them work ethic. You need to teach them independence. They need to learn how to stand on their own two feet, then you're going to have responsible adults. And sometimes that requires a little tough love along the journey, but you need to teach them work ethic and independence. Stand together with each other is another one. If mom has said no <clears throat> to something, you can't come in and be, you know, the, uh, the white knight coming in and saying yes and <clears throat> undermining what your wife said. And it's the same thing for the wife or the, or the husband, whatever. If one parent says yes or no, even if you disagree with that uh, decision that was made, that's a discussion for you to have between your spouse and yourself. It's not a discussion to have in front of the children, and it's not something where you overrule another parent because then you're undermining the other parent. And children, again, are smart, and they're going to play you against each other, and they will divide and conquer. So you must be a united front. So... Anyway, that, you know, that's some of the things I wanted to talk about. And, you know, if you're a new dad, if you've been doing it for a long time, um, enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a wonderful ride. And like I said, it was literally the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Every day of watching my children go grow has been a privilege. It's been an honor. And I am thankful to God and to anyone, whoever, allowed me to be this person in this life with my wife and my four children, I've been beyond blessed. It's exceeded all of my dreams. So I want to wish you the very best. If you're new parents out there, hopefully this helps you. Um, hopefully some of these tips make sense. And I wish you nothing but the best. Enjoy every moment you have with your children. Soak in the memories and just live your life to the fullest. That's all you can do in this life. And it's always when it's you know said and done, I want to look back you know, when I'm at the very end of my life and have as few regrets as possible. So one of those things that you can do is enjoy your family and enjoy your children while you have them. All right. I love you all. Have a great night. And thank you for tuning into the John DeVito Show.